So next, what we're going to do is we're going to expose the logic layer to the presentation layer through a web API. So now let's just add a new folder. I'm just going to call it API. It's very simple. And we're going to add a new web API controller. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create an empty API controller. We'll just call it user API underscore controller. There we go. All right, so let's just change the root term, make it simple, api for slash user. And let's go ahead and create two simple API calls. Uh, wait, let's just go user forward slash, there we go. All right, so let's create those API calls. So this is going to go in a bit of fast forward mode here, but uh, I will allow for the methods to be seen once I'm done. So firstly, let's just reference the user logic class we've just created. And let's just call that user logic. And we'll make it private. So let's create our add user API call. Let's just make it a get. Ideally, in a real world situation, you'd be using HTTP post and you would be passing an actual model object to this API call. But by making it a HTTP GET, I can show you that the call actually works by just using a web browser instead of having to use something like Postman. All right, so we're starting with the first API call being the add user API call. So remember, we're passing four variables, which we will just pass as URL parameters in this instance. And there they are. We go create new user. So there we have the bool result. It is an ASIN call, so we're going to wait on it as we want to know the result of it. And now we're just passing the variables that we're going to be passing through the URL via URL parameters. And now we're just referencing them within the call. And there we have it. And then we can just return that result. Great. The next call we will sort out is the API call to get all the users from the database. Um, what we'll do here is we'll just create a custom view model list just so that we can expose what we want to expose and then in that way we can customize our JSON object when it comes back in a viewable list. So we're just creating this user view model and we're just going to copy this model here and remove some values that we don't need and rename them etc. As we don't want to expose the password, I've just removed that and let's change this to just auth level.
All right, and there we have our basic user view model. And we're gonna be returning a list of user view model. All right, now let's show you that everything's actually working within the web layer or presentation layer. So let's create a new user in the database. So it's just gonna be a straightforward HTTP GET. There we go. I've already pasted what we've got there. So Parameters have all been passed. The parameters are all there. So we've got username, email address, password, and auth level. All right, so let's just see what's in our user tables. So there are no users there yet. So let's step through. And results of true indicating that the user has been added successfully. So now if we look in the database, we should have a user there. Get a code, there's the email, the password, and the auth level. And as you can see, there are all the parameters within the URL. So let's add another user, and we'll call them guest user with the exact same variables other than for the username. And let's see if that user, yep, that user's been added successfully as well. Great, got a response of true. Let's just add one more user so that when we retrieve the list of users, we have more than two individuals returned. All right, so there are our three users that we've added. Get our code, guest user, and Mr. User. So now let's get all those users and return them in a list. So there's our API call there. All right, so this is the method we're gonna execute here. So let's just throw in a breakpoint, the beginning of the call, to make sure it gets hit, and yes, it has. All right, let's see, it should return a user, yeah, three users, so we've got a user count of three. Great, so it's retrieved all the users. 
and now we're going to just bind those users to our user view model and there we go so there are the three users we've created so now that comes to the end of the tutorial just showing you that everything works correctly and i hope you enjoyed it and yes hopefully we'll catch you on the next one